Hey guys, and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. And here we are talking about another arcade machine today. This one is my William Smash TV machine, and we'll go ahead and cover this one a little bit more traditionally. The montage on GI Joe is just kind of something I did for fun, similar to virtual racing a while back. And so none of that here today. I'll actually try and articulate some of the work that had to happen to bring this one back. So if you didn't see, I had picked this one up at auction for about $600. Overall, it was in pretty good shape, but it had been turned into a Marvel Super Heroes versus Street Fighter. I showed some of this in an earlier video, so feel free to jump back and take a look at what this used to be if you're interested. Okay, so the side art. Unlike Retro Ralph, who was going through a paint stripping process on his, my sides were original and were never painted over when the game was converted. So this means that the majority of the work was just cleaning these up as best I could with a magic eraser and then some simple green solution. Yeah, there were some dings here and there that I touched up as well. When I repainted the front of this and covered the sides up with paper, I left these areas unprotected and then hit them with the black enamel. Overall, it worked out well, and unless you go looking for these areas, they are pretty hard to spot. I also took a black paint pen and ran it along the edges of the cabinet to darken any areas that had been scuffed up or chipped over the past few years. I've touched up some of the graphics with the same type of pens, but I haven't yet picked up the other matching colors I would need to attempt more work here. And I'm a little skeptical. I think this is a lipstick on a pig situation and I may just leave it as is. So I just showed some of those edges and you probably saw that this got all new T-molding installed as well. As I mentioned on the first video, I'm not a fan of that dingy red. So this is a brighter true red coloring, which I personally think looks a little bit better on the cabinet. It's obviously not permanent and is easily replaced. So no harm here and not going fully original. All right, so I did have to eventually drag this back outside and repaint the front and the areas on the sides of the monitor. The lower section originally had some type of vinyl applied over it and it was really scratched up and marked, had holes in it, and overall it just didn't look great. So after trying to clean it up and save it, I recognized it just wasn't going to look nice. I made the hard decision to strip it entirely. I then bondoed all the holes, I sanded everything down, and repainted it to make it look fresh. Also repainted the coin doors while I was at it. Now you guys know I mentioned on the earlier video that I had to completely replace the control panel. This new one was made by a cloth member. I felt really fortunate to get this from him. You obviously can't tell, but it does have a metal plate cut to rest on top of the wood. And it gives this a pretty solid feeling. Also mentioned before, I added four Repro four inch Wicko sticks for this. These use the leaf switches rather than the micro switches and it gives a much more authentic and smoother feel to the overall gameplay. I gave the start button Raleigh leaf switches as well, but that's pretty trivial. I did want to comment on the control panel overlay here by Sabo's Arcades. First and foremost, the print quality is awesome and this feels like a really rugged material that will easily hold up for home use. I did want to call out though that some of the details on the print for the overlay are a little off from the original that I peeked at on the cab while I was working on this. I obviously wasn't able to save the original, but you can see the Williams logo that was used on the repro is different from that of the original. There are some other differences as well. You can see the serial number is absent on player two's profile picture. And then the lights that surround the border are really just yellow circles on the repro. Whereas on the original, there's some white inside of them to help sell them as light bulbs. So this is a little disappointing, but at this stage, I'm not about to rip the control panel apart again for the sake of new artwork. Now, if I had to do this over again, I'd probably give XL Arcade's overlay a try. Their picks on eBay seem to address the issues that I just pointed out. Speaking of those lights we just talked about, they are correct in appearance around the new bezel that is also from Sabo's Arcades. Now, this was a welcomed addition to the cabinet as the original glass that I had was scratched and had some flaking paint underneath. 
This design was originally only available on the 19 inch version of the cabinet, but Sabo's enlarged it to use with the 25 inch monitor. Overall, I like the design and how it ties everything together, but the cameras in the bottom corners hide viewable portions of the screen. Now, initially, I didn't think that this was a big deal, but the more I play the game in later levels, it does become problematic. This is a tough call now as to how much it bothers me and whether or not I should simply replace it with a new piece of smoked glass or leave it as is. Finally from Sabos is the Marquee. This is a really nice high quality print that looks exceptional when lit. The original bulb for the cabinet was burned out and so I simply wired up the usual LED in its place. Now this completes the artwork I needed to get this back looking to original. Overall, I'm very happy with the quality of the repro art pieces. If the control panel details were just tidied up a bit, this would have been a home run. So I'll show a little of the insides here. I still need to do some work with the wire management, but hell, I really wanted to make sure everything worked before locking this all down. I did sand the interior here a bit and wiped everything down. Everything in here had tons of dust all over it. I removed the power setup and cleaned all of this up as well, so this is sparkling and fresh looking. Of course, we needed an actual Smash TV board in here to play the game, so that is installed on the left wall here along with the soundboard. And I need to give a huge shout out to Brad Radell who fixed this board up for me. I was having some really wonky issues with it registering phantom inputs, but Brad saved the day. I think from the time I mailed out the board to him, until the time I got it back, it was less than a week. The guy really provided top-notch service. I highly recommend him if you need anything Smash TV or Total Carnage related. Speaking of Total Carnage, here it is mounted on the right side of the cabinet. So yes, with the swap of the harness, this machine will also play Total Carnage now. All original boards here, no emulation of any kind taking place. Now I may get a switcher at some point in the future to make life a little easier, but for now, I'm cool with just doing the manual swap. As for the monitor, you guys already saw that I had to pull this out, wash it down, and then I had to reapply some conductive paint to the parts where the Aquadag washed off. I also recapped the monitor chassis and gave it a new flyback. Now the chassis has definitely seen better days. It has some burn marks on it and even a hole that had to be jumped. The overall picture quality is definitely an improvement, but there are some imperfections and waviness I'm still trying to work out. Oh, and while we're in here, I did have to add the negative five volt connection to the JAMA harness I bought. It's kind of irritating that it didn't come fully populated, but it did have the additional buttons that I needed for Smash TV. So all in all, not too terrible, I suppose. I did also cut another set of wires to run power to the coin door lights as well. And while we're on that topic, I'll shoot you straight here. These are just lights on the inside. I didn't add the mechs here to make this fully coin operated. Now, I can easily do so if I want to, but honestly, this is my personal copy of Smash TV, so to speak. And the fact that this is on free play and will be negates the need for those mechs. More concerning to me is that this looks sharp with new paint, lights, and fresh locks. So overall, this was a lot less work than G.I. Joe. Having solid original side art goes a long way in that you don't have to strip everything down to redo it. You wanna preserve the history of the piece wherever you can. Now, it did still need some paint, cleanup, and ultimately this whole thing needed rewired. Some repro parts, including the controls, but it turned out really well, and maybe most importantly, it plays well. So that is it for Smash TV, another cabinet complete and added to the lineup. Now maybe I'll add a switcher back in on this one at some point, but for now I'm really happy that I was able to salvage a, a pretty rough Smash TV that was looking sad. And secondly, I was able to add the arcade version of one of my top Super Nintendo games into my cabinet collection. So you guys tell me, was $600 spent for the cabinet worth it? I mean, I did have to sink in some money, mostly to the control panel and new sticks, but I still came in under a grand and I have a pretty damn nice Smash TV cab that I think would easily sell for four figures. So I don't know, I'm pretty pleased, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.